Man City win the Premier League title after beating West Ham to become first English team ever to clinch four in a row. Manchester City have become the first English team in history to win four league titles in a row following a 3-1 victory over West Ham at the Etihad. Pep Guardiola's side have now won six out of the last seven Premier League titles having topped the table with 91 points, as Arsenal fell short for the second year in a row. Phil Foden's brace and a Rodri third saw City romp to a convincing win, putting the icing on the cake on a historic day for the club and English football. Despite Mikel Orteta's side beating Everton it was not enough to stop Guardiola's side who clinched the league by just two points. City and Sir Alex Ferguson's Manchester United were the only teams in Premier League history to win three in a row with the Red Devils doing so between 1998-99 and 2000-2001 and then again in 2006-2007 and 2008-2009. Before the inception of the Premier League, only Huddersfield Town, Arsenal and Liverpool had ever won three on the trot. City matched the record of three last season as part of their treble winning campaign, and have now moved out on their own with their fourth crown. Man City have won four in a row becoming the first team in English top flight history to do so. Phil Foden got City off to a flyer against West Ham, scoring a screamer inside two minutes. Rodri added his name to the score sheet on a fantastic day for the champions at the Etihad. Erling Haaland scored 27 goals on his way to winning the Premier League Golden Boot. Phil Foden, centre, has played a massive part in their success this season winning the Football Writers Player of the Year award as well as the Premier League Player of the Year. Playing a vital part in City's season was Erling Haaland, who scored 27 times to win the Premier League's Golden Boot for the second year in a row, after previously netting 36 in a record-breaking season last year. The star of the season though was boyhood City fan Phil Foden, who won the Football Writers Association Player of the Year and Premier League Player of the Year for his 19 goals and 8 assists in a City shirt. Manchester City have lost just three games all season, compared to Arsenal's five. The Gunners will look at their loss to former boss Unai Emery's Aston Villa at the Emirates, which saw two late goals from Leon Bailey and Ollie Watkins in April, as the key moment their grip on the title loosened. While a 0-0 draw with City in March at the Etihad was seen at the time as a positive result, a victory on that day would have given them the title today. Arsenal in the first half of the season lost games to Newcastle, Aston Villa, West Ham and Fulham, with back-to-back -back losses against the latter two making it three wins on the bounce without a win after they also drew against Liverpool. Arsenal will be left to Rue Sun heung mins failed opportunity against Man City midweek. Arsenal threw away three points in a costly 2-0 defeat to Aston Villa last month. Ilkari Gundogan lifted the trophy as part of their treble success last season. The goalless draw at the Etihad also played a part in Arsenal's failure to win the league title. City put one hand on the trophy with their 2-0 win away at Tottenham, where Guardiola's City have lost six Premier League games, more than against any other opponent. Arsenal will be left to rue their miss from Sun Hume Min who saw his one-on-one -on -one opportunity saved by Stefan Ortega which could have drawn the match level, as perhaps the title-deciding moment. City always finished the season strongly, as Liverpool on two prior occasions know having lost the title by one point, having not lost since their 1-0 loss to Aston Villa on December 6. City will now look complete the domestic double on May 25 where they face Manchester United at Wembley in the FA Cup final for a second time running. Wardialer came out on top last year winning 2-1 against Eric Ten Hag to take a step closer to their treble. Inside Liverpool dressing room as Jurgen Klopp brings up Man City in final team talk. Jurgen Klopp bid an emotional farewell to Liverpool on Sunday and gave a rousing speech to his players in the dressing room after rounding off his stint with a 2-0 success against Wolves. Jurgen Klopp hailed his Liverpool stars in a rousing post-game speech after tipping the club for another Premier League title battle with Manchester City. The German took charge of his final Reds match on Sunday evening ahead of his farewell, and Klopp's side gave him the perfect send-off with a 2-0 win against Wolves. Following the match, Klopp was loudly serenaded by Anfield, while he also gave a speech to supporters. He then saved some special words for his squad when they all headed back to the dressing rooms, in footage shared by the club on social media, the 56-year-old expressed his affection for his players, who were all still in their kits. 
He also praised them for going toe-to-toe -to -toe with newly crowned Premier League champions Manchester City. I love you, that's what I can say, Klopp said in the dressing room, the football you are able to play is absolutely ridiculous. I can't wait to be watching you, developing, making next steps. Coming third, I don't even know yet who became champion, to which a voice replied, City. Klopp continued, well, the only ones who stopped them do that was us, in 2019-20, and you can do that again. There might be some people who say, third place, is not enough, I tell you, they don't have a clue about football. Could we have had better moments? Yes, of course, that's always possible. But did we do better than you can usually expect? Oh yes, because it takes longer to become a top team again. And you did that, clicks, like this and that's why expectations go, up gesture, like this and then we couldn't keep the pace. That's the problem a little bit. With Orne Slot expected to take control once Klopp departs, the latter revealed he is expecting plenty from the side going forwards. He continued, coming third in the first season with Liverpool 2.0, and from now on with new energy from outside, with new influences, with new push, proving yourself, that's good for squeezing everything out of your career. I love you, it was absolutely outstanding, thank you for the ride. I'm so proud of you, I'm so proud that I was allowed to be a part of this, thank you very much. And the sky's the limit for you boys. Thank you. Klopp received a warm reception after finishing his speech. All of those inside the dressing room applauded him, while some cheered as he walked away from the center of the room. Goodbye Jürgen. Virgil van Dijk and Trent Alexander-Arnold break down in tears on the pitch as Liverpool say farewell to Klopp, as both stalwarts contemplate their own futures with just 12 months left on their deals. Virgil van Dijk and Trent Alexander-Arnold could not hold back the tears after embracing Jurgen Klopp following his final game in charge of Liverpool. Klopp finished his nine-year reign on a high as the Reds recorded a 2-0 win over Wolves at Anfield thanks to first-half goals from Alexis McAllister and Jarrell Kwanzer, but that mattered little as all attention turned to Klopp at the final whistle. He strode onto his pitch at full time and hugged his captain van Dijk. In an extremely emotional moment, the Dutchman burst into tears after over six years of playing under Klopp. During that time, Liverpool have won seven major trophies, with Klopp and Van Dijk at the heart of their success. Just one year after Van Dijk joined the club in January 2018, Liverpool won the Champions League, and they followed that up by triumphing in the Premier League for the first time in 30 years in 2020. Virgil van Dijk was in tears as he hugged Jurgen Klopp on the pitch after his final match in charge of Liverpool. He cried on Klopp's shoulder after an emotional afternoon at Anfield. A Club World Cup, two Carabao Cups, an FA Cup and the UEFA Super Cup followed, to mark one of the most successful periods in Liverpool's recent history. Van Dijk admitted last month that he was dreading Klopp's departure, which the 56-year-old manager announced back in January. After embracing all of his players, Klopp spoke to the Anfield crowd and encouraged them to get behind incoming boss Ornslot, who revealed on Friday that he will be replacing Klopp next season. Klopp then carried out his trademark fist bumps in front of the cop as he took the adulation of the fans. As his players watched on, Alexander-Arnold was also seen crying, having played all of his professional club football under Klopp. Klopp opted to hand Alexander-Arnold his debut as a teenager in 2017, and the fullback has never looked back, becoming one of the best right-backs in world football. Trent Alexander-Arnold also couldn't hold back the tears after full-time on Sunday. He has admitted he owes everything to Klopp for showing faith in him when he came through the academy. Klopp spoke to the crowd after full-time and urged them to back incoming boss Orn Slot. Alexander-Arnold has admitted he owes Klopp everything following his development in recent years, and has conceded playing for another manager next term will be strange. He took to X after the match to post a video of himself alongside Klopp from the start of his career alongside the caption, Thank you, Gaffer. Van Dijk and Alexander-Arnold both have big decisions to make on their futures in the coming weeks and months, as they each have just one year remaining on their current contracts. Whether they opt to continue at Liverpool with slot in the dugout remains to be seen, but the Reds will be desperate to keep the club stalwarts for years to come. Klopp bows out having led Liverpool to third place in the Premier League, 
with his team finishing nine points behind champions Manchester City in his final season at the helm. Thanks for watched this video if you like this don't forget like and subscribe this channel. Goodbye.